polite notice kindly note that headache and fever is not equivalent to malaria in Africa of course there are very many causes of headache and fever ranging from medical gynecological surgical etc that you should be aware of in this context the purpose of this video is to enlighten the society so that we avoid self medication when we are sick and this is very very important in this particular video seeking professional opinion that is going to the health facility for medical checkup is always key and this will help to avoid any complication that might result due to self medication Making diagnosis early can help to improve one's condition and to avoid complication or a condition becoming chronic and leading to loss of life and this is also very very vital in this context Stay with me in this video as I shed light on some of the disadvantages of self medication and also possible solutions by inviting very many people to give their suggestions in this video kindly subscribe and stay with me as they are going to give their opinions in this context i greet you everyone so this topic of self medication is a very tricky one being that i'm a victim of it my reason for saying this is because i don't even remember the last time i ever visited an hospital whenever i feel and headache or feel something funny i normally just go by painkillers taken all is okay but from a point of professionals or the way i normally hear it it's very risky because you might use other drugs and these drugs might end up putting your life in or when it reaches the time that you will need them so much or when you're taken to the hospital and you are supposed to use them they might not be able to function in your body because your body shall have already gotten used to them so it's a tricky one but most of us most of us do self medication self medication is when a person decides to go and buy drugs on their own without prescription and consume them for an illness that they have no uh, much knowledge about so the first danger that i'm going to talk i will talk about today is drug interactions drug interactions occur when drugs are used together maybe two drugs that use the same enzymes will compete for the enzyme and therefore you will not get the desired effect of that drug so drug interactions occur uh, also when we have different drugs that actually increase the dosage of the other in the, in in the sense of what you call the bioavailability remember bioavailability is the amount of drug that is available in blood at a given time so a drug has a half life so if you take a drug and another drug that are actually inhibiting an enzyme that is metabolizing the other the drug of bioavailability will increase and therefore you will be poisoning yourself and that is another adverse effect that is poisoning and intoxication most people buy drugs without knowing the correct the correct dosages and now this one is leading to the poisoning and intoxication remember that most drugs are uh, detoxified in the liver and therefore if you take too much of the drug you injure the cytochrome p450 and that will be poisoning the liver the other drug uh, danger that can occur due to the self medication is that we can have drug interactions drug uh, reactions i mean drug reactions are the side effects all those uh, 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 feelings that come as one consumes a drug so for example we have uh, a drug that can cause drowsiness and you are driving and you put it and you don't know then you drive and get an accident without prior knowledge that when you take a drug you are not so self medication first of all it dates back to when we were still young and we were still growing up because you find that most of us whenever 
we were sick or our siblings were sick or our parents were sick the, our parents will just go and buy medicine like myself I grew up knowing that when you have headache and you have fever the first thing your parent will say is that you probably have malaria so they just go and buy malaria, anti-malarial drugs which are available over the counter they are only 50 shillings for children and 100 shillings for adults so sometimes it's convenient because maybe the hospital is far like uh, let me say where I come from I need to go on a through a motorbike or a vehicle 50 shillings going and coming back then you go you wait also the line in the hospitals is so long so waiting time also is discouraging so you just think that you could have just saved that time and money by just going to the chemist and buying it and also another disease that we knew of when you have a stomach ache they just go tell you to go buy flooding and when you have a cough and cold amoxic and maybe piriton or now we use antacid and you know things that you learn when growing up it's not easy to how to grow some of them so we find ourselves also passing on these bad practices and bad behaviors to our own kids and it is not our fault Yes, find it happening. And also, if you have to go to a public hospital, there are people. There are so many people. And when you go there, and you see very sick people, you feel as if you are not even sick. So you you can even regret and say, Ah, I would have just got that anti malarial drug so that I do self medication. Otherwise, as a person, my take, I don't think it's right to do self medication especially if you are not sure what maybe somebody can use is just the paracetamol that is used to slow down the pain if you have headache or if you have some pain as you go visit the hospital but we find ourselves with self-medication it's dangerous it can be life-threatening and it has led to a lot of problems like let's say for instance antibiotics amoxil is an antibiotic flagyl is antibiotic I'm not sure about septrin, but those are the antibiotics I know of. Ampiclox is antibiotics, and these are drugs that are, have been abused so much until the body become resistant. So your body is resistant to amoxil, those drugs that you are using, so that when you are sick and the doctor prescribes it for you, now it will not be working because the body has become resistant. Another challenge, you can end up risking even your life because you can take drug overdose or you can take the wrong medication maybe you had typhoid and you think you have malaria so i don't think it's good to do self-medication otherwise family vlogs thank you so much for this awesome topic and it's really educative and i really enjoy it subscribe comment like share hello everyone uh based on our today's topic about dangers of self-medication this is where you can find a patient who makes a self-diagnosis, goes to a chemist, and buys a certain drug without knowing the potential uh, potential adverse reaction of the certain drug. And when he or she takes the drugs, may develop some serious adverse reaction. Another thing is whereby a patient goes to a chemist or somewhere, buys drugs, and when he he or she takes these drugs, they they have something that we call drug interaction whereby these drugs might not hurt the that patient or they, they may bring serious uh, issues in the body of that patient. So my opinion on self-medication would be that it is not right. One thing that sometimes when you are self-medicating, the treatment, the medication that you are using might be resistant to you after so long periods of using medication. Another thing is you may be treating the wrong disease. That means that the underlying condition that you may be having will be progressing. So, so that's I am the one with the from the Mama KMTC. So um, the dangers of self-medication are so severe. Because um, in most of the cases, people treat themselves wrongly. They are treating a wrong disease. Because uh, most of them probably don't go for, to the hospital for more tests or to the laboratory. And that's why uh, they diagnose themselves wrongly. 
So um, this is so bad in a way that we are actually like treating our own disease. And um, there are some diseases which are so severe, uh, which require further checkup. So when you just go to the shop and buy drugs or retrieve, uh, treat yourself according to the you know, you are likely to be masked in a very severe disease. Um, this happens as most of the people, when they get some of the symptoms, they go for a certain drug instead of treating the main disease. So you better, um, you better go for checkup, then a correct diagnosis is made instead of treating yourself at home. Touching the video today, we to talk about one of the major signs of self medication, and that is overdose of the, of the medicine. When you take a medicine, when you, which is not prescribed by the physician, you may take the excess amount that is not required, and this may lead to damage of your liver and your kidney. Thank you. This puppet, and on the topic of dangers of self medication, which may post patients have resorted to. Uh, one of them is adverse drug reaction. The drugs that adversely react to the body depending on an individual, which this patient will not tell, and this is very dangerous. Two is drug drug interaction, drug food interaction in the body. There are drugs that interact. If they interact, they lead to adverse effects which patients should avoid. Three, they, uh, these patients treat wrong diagnosis, they treat wrong diseases, which leads to progressive effect of the disease in the body because it is not treated on time. This is dangerous, this should be avoided. This is just among many other effects on the body when we do self medication. Let's avoid, let's see proper medical options from hospitals and other clinics. Thank you. Dangers of self medications are dangerous drug interactions and incorrect self diagnosis.